Hey, are you guys looking to get into the coding industry? If you are, there is a coding bootcamp I want you guys to check out. It's Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. The link is in the description tab below, but they're focusing on all the latest web development technologies to get your foot in the door as soon as possible. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the 10 most exciting projects for Python in 2018, according to my opinion. Um, now with these projects, every one of them have been like heavily developed in 2018. A few of them were actually started last year, but like with software, uh, a project that was started last year is actually really, really new. Obviously like something that's just started day one, isn't going to be ready for 2018. So, um, if something was created in like, you know, uh, June of, of 2017, it may be included in this list. Although, um, if that is the case then most the majority of the development was done in 2018. So just to kind of give you guys that caveat, uh, with this list. The Prettier project actually came in handy um, quite a bit when I was doing a lot of production J uh, React code writing JSX. Uh, Prettier is a project that is, um, and, and specifically for this particular list, it's Python Prettier. Um, it's Python's implementation of using the Prettier project, which saves just a ton of time on code indentation, styling, and things like that. Um, and not just with Python code, it actually works across all kinds of different code, and not even just programming languages. Like I said, it, it also works with things like uh, JSX and HTML and, and stuff like that. So. Um, the, the reason why you want to use it is literally at the click of control save on whatever code you're writing, it's going to automatically format it to whatever sort of rules and everything that you've set up to make your, your code pretty. Um, and by having those settings in the project, it doesn't matter who's working on the code base. As soon as you go to save it, prettier is taking over and it's putting the code in the right format and things like that, that the team expects it to be in. So it's just a huge time saver for not just, uh, individual developers, but, uh, definitely for large teams, that's what it's aiming for. Um, Python Prettier Project, though, does make number 10 on this list because, um, you know, bringing this to Python is awesome. The next project is called the Traveling Salesman Project, and really it's uh, the SOM TSP. Um, but this is a Python implementation for actually solving the traveling salesman problem. So basically finding optimal routes based on all these different map plots. Um, is, is what this thing is aiming to do. So anytime you're essentially building a map based system when you're trying to get like a point of origin to some sort of destination and then back to the point of origin, um, this type of uh, solution, this Python solution to the traveling salesman problem uh, is something that is available to you and this project can actually be expanded upon and, and obviously made to be uh, quite a bit more sophisticated than it is assuming you're ever trying to, to build an application that is uh, dealing with those types of problems, logistical problems. So number eight is the system design primer. Uh, primer. This is a, a project here that's actually really popular on GitHub. And technically, it, it got started towards mid uh, of last year, but it really took off development in 2018. So that's why it's included in this list. But if you ever wanted to get into multi-tier architecture, like basically commercial type of applications that uh, are being built using something like Python, this is a great project to kind of get your feet wet. It's going to be something that's going to be daunting as a mother f to uh, brand new programmers, but um, if you are like a, a relatively decent Python program, you really want to take it to the next level. Um, if you could truly wrap your head around all this stuff and, and be able to build up uh, even architectures remotely close to what they have, you know, out in here, or even being able to, to grasp and understand uh, the different layers of the architecture, it's going to it's going to take you a long way uh, in a commercial application, which is where most of the jobs are. So um, th this is a good project then for the self-taught Python developers, I think, to check out. So technically the project is called face recognition and not facial recognition, but, uh, whatever. Anyway, it's, um, this is a cool feature for all the machine learning data scientist types, uh, artificial intelligence. This is Python's, uh, relatively simple implementation of looking at and trying to obviously be able to decipher, uh, what is in images, you know, for, not just, uh, in, in images where this, you know, deals with just looking at people's faces, which is obviously one of the more important pieces, I think, of any sort of recognition software that, that we're creating right now. Uh, they're working on a lot of, you know, looking at, you know, irises and, and facial uh, information because that's going to be the future of uh, security as well, probably. So anyway, that's definitely a project to look at to get your feet wet in this sort of thing. Um, it's definitely not something I'm experienced with, but I definitely want to share this with you guys.
So this tool here, which is called What WAF, or however you pronounce WAF, um, is a web application firewall project. And what it does is it actually sniffs out applications, um, web applications that actually have firewall rules in place, which are really just rules for HTTP applications, which is uh, just the com communication that we speak for web browsers communicating with servers. There are certain protections in place for actual client browsers that are communicating with a server um, by default. Like, so Chrome will not let you make an Ajax call to, you know, from your domain to, you know, some other domain, let's say like, you know, G Google, um, unless Google specifically allows that to go through, through something called a course header or setting a course header, uh, to allow that, that request from a third party site to come through. Um, and the reason why you don't want that to happen is because obviously if people could control the client's browser very easily, they could easily just redirect their browser to some sort of, um, you know, malicious URL that's going to download some sort of, you know, Trojan uh, where software or malware or something like that that's going to end up being installed on their machine. So to prevent that sort of thing from happening, browsers have all these safeguards in place, but it only protects the, the client. Um, so the um, web application firewall, though, it actually protects the server side of the application for the same types of things, cross-site scripting and things like that. Um, and and in this tool, you can actually sniff that out and bypass some of those rules. So if anybody's ever you know, interested in, in uh, web security and things like that. Obviously, you can use Python to, to be uh, devious if you wanted. The SimpleCoin project is a um, implementation of the blockchain technology, which is really going to be the most simplest uh, introduction to blockchain technology you could probably go with with Python. Uh, this is truly a project that is brand new. A lot of these projects I mentioned earlier in the video uh, we're not necessarily, you know, started in, in 2018. Um, and many of them were started in, you know, either early or mid 2017, nothing older than that uh, for this list. But clearly with software, like we can't just say, you know, it's 2018. We need projects that only exist in 2018. This is more of like a rolling 12 month period because software takes a long time to build, obviously, um, to actually have something worth sharing. But SimpleCoin is going to be probably the best way to get your feet wet with blockchain type technology, assuming you want to use Python for that. Python's probably not the best uh, language for that type of thing. As far as I'm concerned, it's dynamically interpreted. Seems like blockchain needs like a pretty uh, tough infrastructure. But, you know, obviously Python could work with bits and pieces of that. I just don't think your entire architecture um, would be set up on something like that. Bitcoin uses uh, C++, which is a much faster language. The next project is another machine learning library. It's called Detectron. It's actually created by some of the, the guys over at Facebook. It's written completely in Python. It's using um, you know, a bunch of neural networks and things like that, using something called the Cafe 2 Deep Learning Framework. Um, but once again, all written in Python, it's actually looking to detect objects. Um, so you know, very complicated images. You can see from here, it's looking, it's like trying to identify all these different people in the crowd, and it's doing a pretty good job of that. You can see in the in the further backgrounds here, you know, based on this image, it looks like it's having a hard time detecting what, you know, what these are that are hidden, um, which it probably would because there's not enough data or pixels there to probably be able to decipher what that is. But uh, anyway, um, obviously machine learning, artificial intelligence is a huge, huge deal. And uh, the fact that you can use Python is pretty cool. The next project is the vid to vid project. This is actually a really cool project. It just got started last month. It's all written in Python, but it's using photo real, realistic video to video translation. So this thing is sophisticated, but basically you end up using all these uh, input labels and then you're able to then transfer um, and not just like, I guess, the, the video that is being watched and it's just using you know different clips to not just figure out uh, object recognition, but it also has to figure out like in which direction things are headed and things like that. So it's doing more than just object detection. Um, but you can obviously do some real cool stuff like this. Like, so it's actually able to read this lady's face and you can just, anyway, there, there's quite a bit of different things you can do with this. Um, somewhat in, in its infancy, there's now something called an unsupervised video to video trans, uh, translation that's being uh, suggested by Cornell University right now. So this is a lot of cutting edge technology, uh, a lot of cutting edge research going into this type of thing. And this is the first Py Python implementation and it just got started last month. All right, so number two on this list, I'm trying to be helpful here, is, uh, is the algorithms project. And this is actually something new in Python, uh, but it's, it's gaining a lot of popularity. A lot of people are adding to it. 
Um, and this is really just a lot of people ask about how do I get better at algorithms and, and like, you're just not magically going to like probably figure this stuff out in your head. I mean, most, in most cases, like things have already been figured out for you. You just need to understand how they work and how to apply them. Um, but with the algorithms project, it actually goes into more in-depth detail about how some of this sorting is and merging and things like that is actually working. Um, it gives you graph examples. It gives you demonstrations, like actual, you know what I mean? So it's just, it's a very, very helpful project to figure out, okay, if I have, this type of programming problem and it's going to require some sort of algorithm uh, a project like this is probably the best place to go because there's going to be all kinds of algorithms listed here that um that may be able to help you figure out whatever sort of problem you have and this is also a brand new project and python is used for a lot of different data analysis and data crunching so i expect that something like this is going to grow uh tremendously in 2018 and 2019. So number one on this list is the PIP environment project, which is created by one of the, uh, well, the, the creator of the Python requests library. Um, he's actually a fellow Virginian as well, but um, just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the PIP environment project is actually going to be the successor to the virtual environment. So a lot of people ask, you know, should I be using virtual environment or PIP environment? You know, if you're still using virtual environment, I think probably, you know, going into later this year and even into next year, like everybody's going to be using PIP environment. It's actually the best of both worlds. It's actually learning from a lot of different package managers, you know, like Cargo and Rust or like NPM or uh, and, and Node or Yarn and things like that. So it's actually, it's kind of the best of all those worlds. And it's it's combining it into a new package manager that, that most Python developers are going to use, if not all of us. So anyway, that is the number one on this list. Let me know what you guys think. If there's anything I left off, please leave comments. Also vote up the video. I please appreciate it. Uh, if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe for more videos like this. And thank you. Have a good day. Bye.